Today we're going to look at the difference between scalars and vectors. Scalars are quantities that have magnitude but not direction. They usually have units of measurement also. So for example, we could talk about temperature or mass, 27 degrees Celsius, but not 27 degrees Celsius in some direction, or 125 kilograms for mass, but not 125 kilograms east or west or down. Vectors, on the other hand, have magnitude and direction, as well as usually units of measurement. Examples here would be displacement, velocity, acceleration. So we could say something moved 125 meters north, it's traveling at 38, point, 38 meters per second west, or it's falling at 9.8 meters per second squared down. In one dimension it wasn't important, but in 2D or potentially 3D problems, we do have to make some distinctions between vectors and scalars. Velocity is a vector, speed is a scalar. Displacement is a vector, distance is a scalar. In your car, you actually have a speedometer, not a velocity meter, since it just tells you how fast you're going, the magnitude of your speed, rather than giving you your speed and direction. Similarly, your odometer measures distance instead of displacement. If it measured displacement, you could have 150,000 miles on a car, and if you drove it back to the factory, the odometer would say zero. Scalar is always just one number. A vector can be written as a set. It'll take d numbers in d dimensions to describe a vector. We're generally going to stick to 2D problems rather than 3D because the physics isn't much different, but the geometry is significantly harder. And we're going to use the whiteboard for practically everything, so 2D is really the best choice. We're going to have to break this vector, a given vector on the whiteboard, into two pieces x and y, and we'll call them components. Here's an example of the vector. You can see it's five units long in the x direction and one in the y direction. We can call this vector a, and then we can call the components x and y, a sub x and a sub y. Most books use boldface type for vectors, so you can distinguish them from scalars. It's not really easy to do that on a whiteboard, so frequently we'll just put an arrow over the letter to indicate a vector. The components do not get arrows over them because they're not vectors, they're vector components. So far we could write a vector as 5 comma 1. It'd be a little bit better to write ax equals 5 and ay equals 1. One other thing we could do is use unit vectors. These are kind of the opposite of scalars in that they have direction but no magnitude. Their magnitude is always just 1 regardless of what system of units you're using. We usually write the vectors either in italic form in a book or with little hats over them on the whiteboard. X hat and Y hat would be unit vectors in the X and Y direction, although unfortunately rather than X hat, Y hat, and Z hat, you usually see I hat, J hat, and K hat. So we could write A is 5I hat plus 1J hat, and that would be another vector form. We could also write A in magnitude and direction. If you've used polar coordinates before, you'll have seen this. The magnitude of the vector is its length, and since the vector is the hypotenuse of a triangle, we can find the length by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. This is just the Pythagorean theorem. We get a length of about 5.1 units. To find the direction, we use trig. Since we have all three sides of the triangle now, we could really use sine, cosine, or tangent to find theta. But typically, we'll use uh, tangent so that we can find this first before we find the hypotenuse. The angles are generally measured counterclockwise from the right or the positive x-axis. This is just a convention, but it's the one I'm going to use. You can use a different one if you want. Uh, if we go back to this to find the angle and we use the arc tangent, it would be opposite, which is y, over adjacent, which is x. And if we do that, we'll get 11.31 degrees. So if we give the magnitude, square root of 26, and the direction, 11.31 degrees counterclockwise from positive x, this is another way to describe a vector, and this part is important, the counterclockwise from positive x, because otherwise we don't really know the angle that you're talking about doesn't